everyone. I'm kind of doing a bittersweet video today. It's going to be my top 10 favorite King of the Hill episodes. As you guys know, a very good friend of mine just passed away, Johnny Hardwick, and I was originally going to do another cold case video this month, but I promised two years ago when I first started doing lists and etc. on YouTube that I would honestly go and make a top 10 King of the Hill episode list. So in dedication and in honor of Johnny Hardwick's passing, the voice of Dale Gribble himself, I'm going to do my top 10 favorite King of the Hill episodes. Now, keep in mind, this list is very hard to make. And not by because of Johnny's passing or anything, but this is the main reason that I procrastinated so long on this. There is very rarely a bad episode of King of the Hill. There isn't an episode that I really outright hate. Unlike stuff like The Simpsons, the show started off strong and it ended strong. There's some lackluster episodes. In fact, the main episode that I really dislike and don't care to watch is where Peggy goes to Montana to visit her mom. And even then, you know, there are some laughable moments out of there, like the moments with Henry Winkler and etc. So... This list is going to be hard to make, and there's going to be some episodes that are going to be missed that are definitely some people's favorites, including many, many. I could have easily done a top 50 episode list, but this is my top 10 favorite King of the Hill episodes of all time, and if there is one of yours, or probably a hundred of yours that I missed, leave it in the comments, because there's a lot to go over, and... I will do my best to try to keep everyone happy. I promise, anyway. Um, yeah, Johnny was a great guy. I even got him to sign my Season 1, Season 13, and Season 6 set, which I don't exactly have on me right now because I'm too lazy to go walk into the next room and go get it. But, yeah, these right now are, you know, it just was so painful to lose Johnny. I think if you ask 90% of King of the Hill fans, they will say Dale is their favorite character. And he's my favorite character of the show, too. Alongside Bill, Buck Strickland, several characters. But anyway, let's get things started and let's start listing this stuff. Top 10 favorite King of the Hill episodes. Let's go! Number 10, we start out with... Probably the poop humor. Hank's unmentionable problem I watched when I was in high school the first time, and dear God, this made me laugh. Now, I actually watched King of the Hill a lot closer when I was in high school and when it re-aired on Adult Swim, because I just got a lot more out of it that way. I didn't watch it during its first real big airing in the, er in the mid to late 90s, so once it aired on Adult Swim and it was on reruns on Cartoon Network and etc. I just rewatched it from that way. And this episode was probably one of the first episodes I saw. It is season one and basically Hank can't take a dump. That's about it. He's suffering constipation and basically this. Hank is a lot of people think that he's kind of a douche or a jerk and yeah he is. But the best moments with Hank is when he is completely and utterly uncomfortable. And this episode is one of him at his most uncomfortableness going on here. It's just freaking hilarious to watch. Yeah, I, I don't know. It goes from some of the most memorable jokes I have ever seen on the show. And I still quote it to this day. Like when Peggy is watching the Coop, you know, that doctor guy show... And he's like, et cetera, talking about what happens into your body. And Hank's like, what the hell is this? Howard Stern? I was like, what the? <laughs> I just start laughing my ass off every time this episode is on. And this one, it, it, it just, I get the most laughs. I laugh at it more than I should. And constipation is just something... That shouldn't be laughed at, but the way King of the Hill writes it, because this is definitely its earlier seasons, the poop humor in this is great. I mean, even Dale gets a great line here about eating freaking bacon grease. It's probably one of the best episodes of season one in general, or and it's just 
great to watch Hank be completely uncomfortable in this episode, out of his element, thinking, dear God, why me? It's just so funny. Like, there are even moments where he's at the doctor's office and he sees one of his old teachers and she's like, this is an old person doctor. And then the lady at the desk starts calling why he's there to see her cons consumption concept and Hank just starts walking with a broken or like a pulled muscle in his leg or something <laughs> oh lord it's just funny and I this is the one that I probably laugh at the whole way through with Hank now I said with Hank not the episode I laugh at the whole way through but one that I laugh at with Hank and it's just well worth this spot I mean it's fun to watch Hank in pain and uncomfortable, and that's what makes him so much enjoyable. Hell, even Peggy is fun in this. Having, like, one of the best funeral dream sequences in the whole series, besides, you know, the firefighting episode where they pants somebody that passes away that's on the fire team. It's, you know, it's a whole other thing. This is King of the Hill at peak season one comedy writing. Slice of life, just fun. And you enjoy it. I'll go to the next one. I apologize. I'm getting off track. Let's move on. Number nine. Of course, we cannot forget this gribble of an episode. Megalo Dale. Megalo Dale is a very interesting episode. And it shows how good Dale is at his job at being an exterminator. And how much his obsession with conspiracies actually is. I think a lot of my personality, I think, comes from Dale Gribble, too. I'm a conspiracy nut, and I'm anti-government, too. And Dale himself is amazing in this episode, thinking that the price changes and stuff are being done by Chuck Man Joni. Instead of... Dale gets hired on at the Megalo Art, thanks to Hank's request, since Hank is friends with the original store owner, and at the time... Dale is setting up traps to basically find what animal is causing and destroying stuff and leaving trails of etc. throughout the store. And they want to get it nipped in the bud. However, Dale goes to be Dale Gribble and finally says that it's Chuck Man Joni himself hiding around in the store and living in the store that is causing the entire thing. Everyone thinks he's nuts and... It's a little bit of everything in this episode. This is a great episode, too, and it just shows how awesome a character Dale actually is. And like 90% of fans of King of the Hill, Dale is my favorite character. He always gets the most laughs. He always has the most out-there ideas. But when it turns out that he's right in some episodes, yeah, it can be really freaking badass when he's right. And the fact that he was right about Chuck Man Joni was an interesting treat. In fact, it turns out Dale's conspiracy was correct. Chuck Mangione was living in the store, hiding away from the commercial deals that he had to do in the Megalo Mart himself. Because if they find him, they make him travel along the stores, and he's basically a nomad. He has basically no home, and he is stuck doing commercials for Megalo Mart, so he hides and basically eats the food there, and yes, he was leaving the droppings, which is crazy. However, this is very interesting. Normally, Dale is the type of character who likes to brag that he's right, and he's always right. However, in this episode, even though Hank and etc. call him crazy, he doesn't reveal Chuck is living there, and I really like that. It shows that Dale does have a sensitive side to certain aspects of the character, and it's not all about being right for him. He's an anti-Peggy Hill. And by the way, I love Peggy, so don't judge me. This is just an out there episode. One of the best. And it was just really hard to rank this anywhere. Just like most of these episodes, this list is probably going to keep changing. Let's move on to the next one. Now we have the trouble with Gribbles. Oh, man, this one is also Dale Peak writing episode. Dale actually concocts a scheme to sue the Manitoba Tech Tobacco co Company. Boy, that's a tongue twister. 
into trying to get his wife a new facelift, which would cost about five to ten thousand dollars to get it done. And basically, Dale gets the best joke in the episode when he says it'll take 20 years to get that money saved up and then she'll need another facelift. I may have that wrong, by the way. Anyhow, Nancy is getting kind of kicked off her job and being replaced because she's not as young as she used to be, which, you know, you could kind of sue the weather company for that. But anyway, anyhow, like I was saying, Dale comes up with a scheme to sue the tobacco company so he can get the money to pay for the facelift for Nancy. So he fakes a fight and he basically abuses Nancy. Well, at first, he kind of has the scheme to show up in court the tobacco company he didn't think would actually show up and when they did his plan goes awry and kind of gets wrecked right there however he finds out that the tobacco company has actually sent him a manitoba singing fish i think that's what it is and it turns out that he's bugged and etc and hilarity happens so finding out that he is actually bugged, which he is, by the way, he's not going Dale crazy and thinking that, well, no, no way. So he decides to continue on verbally assaulting and abusing Nancy, pretending, saying how much smoking has ruined her face and etc. So he could win this in court. And yeah, a lot of hilarity ensues, causing Nancy to leave him. And basically abandon him while he spends some time with Bill. Getting us one of the greatest moments ever. The Beefaroni song. Which is one of my favorite moments. And it's just a fantastic run of the episode. And it does have a sweet ending. For a while, I thought Nancy was going to leave Dale here. In fact, in a way, I kind of thought it was more self-deserved on her end. Because of all she's done with John Redcorn. And it doesn't pan out that way, at least. But she did kind of... I'm not going to say she deserved it, but maybe Karma jumped around. and I, I don't know. Anyhow, it's a fantastic episode. But it's an ending that does kind of get a sappy-ish ending at the very end of it. Instead of suing the tobacco company, he actually does my advice and sues the weather company. Or the Weather Channel for discrimination. And he gets a file cabinet. So that's also a win here. One of the best Dale episodes. And one of the best episodes in general. You gotta love The Trouble with Gribbles. It's very funny and very memorable. And honestly, I really can't stop talking about this one. Some of its moments are fantastic. And also, it has a great guest star of Robert Stack. You know... The um, agent from Beavis and Butthead to America, and on top of that, the host of Unsolved Mysteries. He also has a pretty fun cameo in this episode, which, you know, he's got one of the coolest voices in the world. And it appears to be an unsolved mystery. I'm sorry, I apologize. Anyhow, that was a terrible imitation. Let's go to the next one. Fear and Loathing. This one is very memorable to me, and it is just straight out funny. Talk about upping your poop joke and puke joke in the same run. This is more of a Peggy Hill-centric episode. It's basically about... It, I kind of compare it with The Simpsons' Homer's Odyssey. Not Homer's Odyssey, but um, the Stonecutters Club and... Uh, the I Hate Homers episode. You know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, I kind of compare it with that. Peggy is tired of not feeling included and not feeling up there. And anyhow, she calls up and asks why the Alamo Beer Company has not sent any more Alamo Beer in town. It's all out of stock. She, They were so impressed with her Spanish, they give her a job. Oh yeah, that's also the one of the side plots of this. There is no Alamo beer on the shelf at all in Texas. However, there is some in Mexico, and I'm pronouncing it the Peggy Hill way. Peggy is actually a freaking rock star in this episode, and before anyone says anything, I know there's a lot of Peggy hate, but I personally love Peggy in this, 
And I actually like Peggy's character too. She's a narcissist on purpose. You're supposed to laugh at her narcissism because it's so over the top. And you're supposed to laugh at her when she's completely wrong. Now, a lot of times, her wrongness is absurd. But in this episode, she is 100% right. And this is one of the times where you feel really relieved that she is right. So, anyhow, continuing on with the episode, she is able to get a job with Alamo Beer on the Spanish line. And she finds out that there is a lot of vomiting and diarrhea going on in Mexico through the hotline. However, she finds out that some soap is dabbled into the Mexican line of the beer. You know, it's basically their fault for trying to promise the cleanest beer in the world. And yeah, basically that. Hank is not supposed to know about the beer in Mexico. However, he goes to Mexico anyway you know, because Peggy told him this, and Alamo swore her to secrecy. Peggy told him, anyhow, and him, Dale, Boomhauer, and Bill all go to Mexico and go grab a beer. They all try to go grab a pack of beers because the other beers were not on the shelf at the time. They come back from Mexico with the symptoms of diarrhea and vomiting. Hank, at first, thinks it's the banana. And Bill says he ate the banana, didn't drink the beer, including the peel, by the way, and says, don't blame the banana, because it really wasn't the banana's fault this round. Bill didn't get sick until hours later, and Hank deducts that it's the beer and Peggy knew, causing him a rift to form in between his and Peggy's marriage. Basically, the two are fighting, and one of my favorite moments in the entire series actually happens. Hank has a beer sitting on the table and ask her if there's a reason she doesn't want to drink it because he wants to drink it much like in the commercial where the father and son have a fight. Peggy drinks it and then she has vomiting and throwing up. However, Hank demands that the Alamo company gives him an apology and they basically don't give him diddly shit. They basically insult the man, causing Peggy to get vengeance in the best way possible. Switching out their fresh new beer at the meeting with the tainted beer, giving the owner and etc. diarrhea and vomiting through the entire group. And he has to do a formal television apology. This one is just great. I love Peggy in this episode, and I love the gang. Hank, Dale, Bill, Boomhauer, all in the gang. I just love this episode in general. It's a fun little episode, and what's nice is there's not really a B-plot. It's all focused on the main storyline of Peggy keeping a secret from Hank, yada, yada, yada. And Peggy gets a really good story out of this one. This episode is just freaking fantastic, and it's basically one of king of the hills best episodes ever done i've watched this one a lot and it is easily one of the best ones i've seen let's go on to the next okay now we're on to that's what she said ben stiller guest stars in this episode and he plays a perverted employee that basically just says a bunch of off-color humor. You remember what I said at the 10, number 10 spot, that watching Hank uncomfortable is always hilarious? This one is Hank at probably his most uncomfortableness because it's just great. Ben Stiller does a fantastic job playing this guy. Using that's what she said jokes or etc. Like Hank saying, well, I hope I don't have to strip it or I'm going to have to be down there all night. This one always gets me laughing, and watching Hank in his most uncomfortableness always cracks me up. Some of my favorite jokes happen in this one. Like, Ben Stiller really is just chewing the scenery in this episode. He's freaking fantastic as Rich. And he used to work at Taco Bueno, which is great, and he just has all these bad habits. In fact, when you think that Buck is going to get onto him about the dirty jokes, Buck loves it because... Buck is just a dirty freaking old man. Tell you what, that old stop just getting behind me. Oh, yeah, that was my Buck impression. Sorry. Anyhow, this was just a great episode in general. The B-plot was fun, too. But 
you got to focus on Hank. Hank gets so fed up with this that he actually thinks about suing Rich for male-on-male sexual harassment. And my God, this one just gets me laughing my ass off. I mean, some of the jokes that he uses and some of the stuff that he does is amazing. And it's... Oh, boy. I love it. And seeing Hank just miserable at work... One of my favorite lines being, well, uh, another day back at the toilet factory with Bill to reply, did Hank get a new job? Is <laughs> just kills me. However, the B-plot was fun too. Dale trying to quit smoking, so he's into doing chewing tobacco because he accidentally set his face on fire due to too much aftershave when he tried to light up a cigarette. Yeah, and now Nancy is complaining yet again. Now, around the end of it, he's trying to inhale the tobacco through a paper cone, which Boomhauer gets fed up and just lights the thing on fire, and it's a giant cigarette. Yeah, Dale's plot line is just... It could have been cut out, but I'm glad they included it. But this is more of a Hank episode, and Ben Stiller is just so much fun with some of the jokes being very memorable in this like oh well my doctor advised me could you give me a hand with this my doctor advised me against heavy lifting yeah me too where's the urinal i love that oh my god or the meat thermometer episode or i worked up a little something with the ball washer oh boy i can't wait to see it uh you know it's it, just a lot of things going on here the perverted jokes are fantastic but there's just one thing one joke that i never really got eating lasagna in bed maybe somebody could explain that to me in the comments because i just don't get that i don't eat in bed so i i i don't know something about leaving crackers in bed i i don't get it i i don't understand it that's the only joke i never got but the rest of the episode is just straight out laughs for me watching hank in misery is fun and poor uh Friggin' Joe Jack and Enrique, or Low Crack and Rige, are just great here. What's the matter, Joe Jack? Can't you take a joke? I, I just love how much effort was put into the off color humor of King of the Hill. If Hank lived in Highland, where Beavis and Butthead were, he would end up kicking their ass because he couldn't stand how perverted those two were. Anyway, Let's go on to the next one, because I'm spending way too much time on this episode. Great episode. Like Joe Bob Briggs says, four stars. Check it out. All right. Now we're on to the top five, The Exterminator, which is a great episode. And fun fact, because, you know, I asked years ago, way back in 2016, Johnny Hardwick, I asked him when his favorite episode of King of the Hill was, was this episode. And you know what? This one is a great episode. Not just for Dale, but just in general. It is a fantastic episode, worthy of number five. But yeah, little known fact, this is Johnny Hardwick's personal favorite episode. Dale can't use extermination chemicals anymore. The more that he does them, there could be a bigger threat to his life. So he basically has to get an Office Space style job. If you guys watched Office Space, you know what I'm talking about at Stick Tech. And Dale hates it. He hates it right off. He doesn't, he's not used to having lunch at a certain time. He's not used to doing a nine to five shift. He's not a big nine to five type of guy. He loves making his own hours and etc. However, he does get a pretty good chance or pretty good job higher up as to firing people. And yeah, I, I just love this episode in general. And I see why Johnny Hardwick himself, you know, Dale Gribble himself loves this episode too. It has some of the most memorable lines like, oh, you're bald and not in a handsome way like Sean Connery. I mean, oh man, I I just love, I, I get a good laugh out of this. Also, this does have like Stephen Tobolowsky in it as a guest star, which is fantastic too. If you guys know, 
I'm a big Steven Tobolowski fan, but that's not why this episode is on the list. You get to see Dale in a 9-to-5 shift firing people just because he can, and he loves it. It's like instead of taking bug lives, he's taking humanity, dignity, and destroying that and getting to embarrass them all in a very humiliating way. He loves the job and the power, but however, Nancy doesn't like who he's turning into. And he is turning into sort of a power-hungry jerk, and he even tries to fire Joseph from the family, which is pretty fucked up in a way. <laughs> this is Dale, probably the most power-hungry and the most powerful, ironically. Great episode, and I see why Johnny Hardwick loves this episode to pieces. I love this episode to pieces. It's freaking fantastic, and I always get a good laugh. Gladstone, you're fired. And I don't know, it's just one of those episodes that you can really get a good laugh, and it's a good dive into Dale's character, too. Anytime that he's in a form of power in any way, it's always really enjoyable. But I think Dale is more enjoyable when he is completely off his hinges. So that's why this one is not quite at my number one. This one is at number five just because... Powerful Dale is great, but Dale, completely off the rocks insane, is better. And that should give you a hint on what my number one is. Anyhow, fantastic episode. This one is one that definitely should be watched by people. It's really underrated, too. I mean, Johnny Hardwick is having a ball playing this character and really going all out there. Thank you, Johnny, for giving us so much Dale Gribble through the years. I mean, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you, man. And I see why you love this one. But let's go on to number four. You know a character that I really love that everyone else probably loves? Like, maybe, like, he's everybody else's favorite character? Cotton Hill. Let's team him up with Dale Gribble in this episode called Dale Tech, which... Basically, Dale is trying, teams up with Cotton to try to enforce his cameras and security network to basically to destroy and get nobody's privacy and get a few bucks on the side just for the hell of it. Call Dell Tech for all your needs. And this one is great. Well, at first he actually sabotages Cotton, but... Around the middle of the episode, they team up, and we see a lot of love for Cotton that he secretly has for Hank in this episode. Basically, Cotton is kind of kicked out of Peggy's house because him and Debbie got into another fight. Well, not Debbie. I get her name mixed up. Donna, I think. Dee Dee. Sorry. There's a lot of Ds on this show. I apologize. Him and Dee Dee get into another fight, and basically he's staying around the house for a few days, and Peggy drops him off at a retirement home, yet he goes crazy at the retirement home, and they give him a police whistle and etc. The police do anyhow, and he becomes like a secondary officer, involving whipping people and humiliating them. Hank kind of sends him on a mission on who is turning the toilet paper upside down and drinking his precious grapefruit juice. You know, the grapefruit juice Bobby Hill drank with a side of broccoli. Sorry, I, I, I like that joke a lot. And yeah, Hank pretty much sent him on a know-nothing mission, and the way Cotton actually interrogates people is fantastic. However, on the side... Dale is kind of teaming up with Cotton, also sabotaging him the same way, so that way he could sell his Dale Tech abilities. We find out that afterwards, Cotton is depressed and he loses his whip and etc. because Hank sends him on a mission. Anyway, Cotton is interrogating everyone. He basically puts uh, Bill's chest hair in the juicer which is insane he drops a jalopy on boomhauer well not really but he calls it a jalopy and tries to crush him with his own vehicle and yeah everyone kind of turns against cotton and cotton gets offended and sort of teams up with dale then they find the actual culprit thanks 
to Dale Tex and Dale's vision, and it was Khan, surprisingly, was going in and moving shit in their house and uh, doing the nasty on their furniture, which if Hank ever found that out, like Cotton said, Khan wouldn't be alive. So yeah, I do like that we see that Cotton does love Hank, and he kind of really sticks up for Hank in this episode, which is one that I really like. Dale is a fantastic character in this run of the episode too although he is a little bit of a bastard here but when he teams up with cotton it's fantastic and he does feel remorse when he does this but it kind of is a little forced but i still enjoy it i really love this one like i said there is many king of the hill episodes that you can't discount let's go on to the next one Number three, my own private rodeo. You know, a lot of questions is asked about Dale's family. And the question that we really want to know, we do know that Dale's mom is passed away. And I'm guessing she was a single mom and raised Dale. Or maybe not, I guess, etc. We don't know all too much about Dale's dad other than Dale hates him in this episode. And in the renewal of the vows, Hank tries to go find Dale's dad on request of Nancy so he could go and watch the renewal of the vows. And we find out that the reason that Dale hates his father, Bug Gribble, is because he tongue stabbed Nancy on their wedding day. But there was more to it. It turns out, well... Dale's dad was actually gay, and he was hitting on a very handsome person at the party, and yeah. He basically grabbed the nearest thing with long blonde hair that he could find and kissed her. Planting one on Nancy was the most disgusting thing I've ever done. Yes, I could do Dale's dad's voice along with many others. And we see Hank in an uncomfortable spot. We see Dale, more of his backstory. This is one of the best episodes ever, too. Worthy of top three. And if you look at everything, we see why Dale based a lot of his life on his hatred for his father. Portion one. Dale's dad's name is Bug. Dale becomes an exterminator. So you know that he de despises his father so much. In a way, in a metaphorical way... He's killing bugs and his father. So, yeah, I you got to love that so much right there. I mean, just that little detail right there. A lot of people kind of miss that. But what I really like about this one is this is a really good episode for the LGBTQ community, too. It didn't make fun of them. It actually wrote them in really well. And the jokes that they made during this episode... A lot of my LGBTQ plus friends find really funny, especially Bill and Boom Hauer's reaction is just fantastic. And Hank just being kind of accepting of it that Dale's dad is gay is doesn't bother him. His dad works at a gay rodeo and his performance is putting panties on a goat. And Dale, he finally gets in contact with Dale and he brings Dale back. Dale finally bonds with his dad again he doesn't hate him until his dad tries to be oprah honest with him and tells him the truth that he is and dale doesn't get to finish it a government agent which makes dale hate his dad all over again this one just really shows that dale is amazing as a character but bug was great i wish we had more episodes with bug because Honestly, this one, he was such a fun character. You can see how much enjoyment that he gets from being around his son and being at their renuptial, I guess is what it is, where they renew their vows and etc. Anyhow, he was just so well done. And Bug was a very likable character who I would have liked to have seen in more episodes. And yes... I did copy his voice quite well, which I am definitely, I, I deserve it, and all your monkey madness that entrails. 
I apologize. I, I get off track. This is just a very fun and enjoyable episode. And instead of making fun of the LGBTQ plus community, it actually kind of shows you from their point of view, which is also really well done. That, you know, Bill kind of plays the asshole. Oh, well, <laughs> let's make fun of the gay person just because their sexuality is that they like the same sex. Let's laugh at them. Which isn't funny. And I really like what they did subtly with Hank here. And the ending of this episode is just fantastic too. Dale goes in to expose his dad at the gay rodeo. And as a government agent. And he finds out that his dad actually is gay. Thanks to him <clears throat> tongue stabbing Juan Pedro in front of him. Kind of culminating in one of my favorite lines of the show. I am drowning in your lies, bug. Swim to me, Juan Pedro. I'm sorry, I'm going to be doing that a lot in this thing here. And, you know, because bug was just a lot of fun. And we see Dale is just openly accepting of his dad. He didn't care. In fact, he thought John Redcorn was gay for years. And that's why he was his best friend for many years. It is a great well done episode put together and you know what this was put out at a time where so many people was giving the community so much hate and bullshit and etc going on so that's another reason why this one is done so well because instead of making fun and showing hatred toward the community they were accepting in fact i think the gay rodeo is a real thing it's fantastic how they were able to pay an homage to a group of people who were treated like garbage. Anyhow, I'm done off my virtue signaling here. This episode is great. Dale is fantastic. Bug is a fun character. I wish we got more of him, but we didn't. Let's go to the next one. Number two is Hank and the Great Glass Elevator. This one is primarily a Bill episode. And basically, Bill hooks up with the former governor of Texas, Ann Richards, who is amazing, and she actually played herself in this episode. Lenore comes back to kind of wreck Bill's life yet again and kind of destroys the relationship that he had with Ann Richards, who treated him like gold. I mean, damn, this was a good episode. Also, there's a side plot of Hank actually being dis disappointed in his family for eating charcoal. Yeah, Peggy Hill and Bobby actually buy a charcoal grill when they accidentally eat charcoal at Luann's house. This is just a very funny as hell episode, and I get a really good laugh at it from time to time. Basically, Hank takes Bill out for his birthday, and they are in a very ritzy hotel. They have the special suite and they go to moon and richards or actually it wasn't really her that they tried to moon it was just random people they were trying to moon at first but and richards actually got to see his bony white ass and bill who is a stand-up dude in this episode actually takes the fall for hank and you see him and his relationship try to form. And they get a romantic relationship going with Ann Richards. Which is just impressively well done. This is Bill's best shining episode in the whole series. And Bill's my second favorite or maybe third favorite character. He does get dumped on in a lot of his episodes. But this is where Bill kind of becomes a winner. He finally gets to kick Lenore off his ass and he gets to overcome her demons. Even when she comes back and tries to ruin his life because he's on top of the world now, he finally gets to strike the final strike. In fact, he even blows her a kiss for good measure after he moons her. I love it so much. This one is just a really well done episode. The side plot is great with Peggy and Bobby buying charcoal and bringing it in the house and Hank being completely pissed off that they would eat a charcoal burger instead of a propane fueled burger and I just fantastic however Hank would probably kick my ass because I prefer charcoal more than I do propane and propane accessories so my ass is kicked now there we go 
This is a great Bill episode and a really good side plot. And it is obviously worthy of being number two. Once in a while, it's nice to see Bill Doltrieve as a winner. There is another good Bill episode, but I know I had to miss putting it on here. But I would consider Made in Arlen number 11. Mm -hmm. So, anyhow, this episode's worthy of being number two. Before we get to number one, I'm going to go over some honorable mentions because there's just a lot of King of the Hill episodes. I'm going to just name some episodes. Made in Arlen is definitely an honorable mention because Bill is the winner in that episode. Um, there's also the two-parters that I like the that the series does where um, Hanky Panky and High Anxiety. I, high Anxiety, I can't pronounce that right now. Boy, I'm off course today. My allergies are kind of getting to me. Um, the other two-parter, Returning Japanese, is a fantastic episode. The Christmas specials and holiday specials, I did forget to uh, put on the list, but I did that on purpose because I kind of already talked about them in some of my other lists, like my favorite Thanksgiving and Christmas specials and etc., there are so many King of the Hill episodes. A bunch of Cotton episodes are great. Peggy Hill Decline and Fall is fantastic because of her bond with Cotton. There is just many more I could talk about. But yeah, these little ones of honorable mentions, I have to mention myself because I kind of missed uh, putting them on there. There is also very more Soldier of Misfortune. Gary Busey was a fantastic guest star as Mad Dog. And, you know, I just couldn't help but talk about these anyway that's it for the honorable mentions let's get to number one number one to kill a ladybird yeah bobby befriends a raccoon and feeds him from the dumpster he didn't really have a strong bomb with ladybird and basically the raccoon attacks ladybird gets stuck in their cellar and attacks Ladybird, possibly giving her rabies. Dale goes into the cellar to get the raccoon out, which is named Bandit, thanks to Smokey and the Bandit. Great reference, by the way. And, yeah. Dale gets attacked and scratched all over, and he thinks he has rabies. Oh, Lord. Dale is the winner in this episode. You remember when I said earlier that the best Dale episodes is when he's off his hinges? This one is Dale at full-fledged insanity. And yeah, this is the best King of the Hill episode of the entire series because it has a great... Both plots. There is really not a B plot in this one. But... They kind of converse together. It starts out as a B-plot, but they, in the end, mesh together. Bobby is actually wanting to protect Bandit, but then he ends up having to take Bandit out himself. Hank is actually bawling his eyes out because he thinks he has to put Lady Bird to sleep because she may or may not have rabies. And yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, if they, and one of my favorite moments with Hank in this episode is where, uh, they are calling him on the phone and he says, well, if the dog is rabid, then we will have to shoot with no questions asked. And Hank's like, oh my God. And with, and they do mention some other past sense with the episodes, like the, uh, shooting episode from the earlier seasons where he can't fire a rifle without really trying. And Hank says, well, with my aim, I think I have to shoot her twice. This one is framed as a Bobby episode at first, but it is actually a Dale Gribble episode. And we see when Dale thinks that he has rabies and he's looking at all the symptoms, even though he's in his underwear, he thinks he's cold. He thinks he's foaming at the mouth and etc. He thinks he's got rabies, which is the best part. He lives in the wilderness. And yeah, he shows up in the middle of the night, tries to steal a hand, burns his hands in the process of stealing food out of the oven. It's, oh my God, Dale's best savage moment. And I just love every second of this episode. 
And then when they're trying to look for Lady Bird, Dale finds them in the woods, ties them up, and tries to drain Hank's blood and pump it into his own blood so he will not have rabies anymore. It's just great. We get to see Dale completely off the rails in this episode because he thinks he's sick. And yeah, it's just fantastic with a really good happy ending. There are some emotional moments in this episode, too. There are moments where Hank turns the saw on and he closes the door and just to hide his crying because Hank doesn't like to cry in front of people. This one is it, it can be it's a mixture of hilariousness and heartbreaking and it's heartbreaking for Bobby and Hank, too, but they do get to bond more and you see Hank's uncomfortable love for his damn dog in this episode how much he really does love Lady Bird and how he is not completely against shooting her even though his aim is really freaking awful he's not against taking her down because he would rather be the one to do it than a stranger do it and then we get to see Dale's insanity which is just incredible I mean the guy has put a bunch of dead frogs on sticks because he thinks he's got rabies for some reason oh lord one of my favorite moments that actually gets me laughing in this episode is where Dale says, no matter how much I beg and scream, do not take the door off or the do not let me out. And Dale's screaming, help me for the love of God. Oh, my God, help me. Then Hank opens the door and Bandit runs out and he's like, you've only had one job. Fantastic amazing this is king of the hills best episode because it's not only funny but it can be emotional and etc on how well it does and it's even emotional for bobby who has to sacrifice shooting bandit to save ladybird and his dad and dale in a sense at the same time it's just so well done, and King of the Hill's writing is always really well done to me. I could go on about how great and funny this episode actually is, and yeah, this one is great, funny, tugs at the heartstrings, it doesn't feel forced, it's incredible, and it is worthy of being number one on the list. And I guess I'm gonna stop it right here. It was a lot of fun doing this list, and I had a, a great ton of fun, and when I found out about Johnny Hardwick's passing, it kind of ate away at me, because Johnny was a good guy. He was super. In fact, this and this and my season six set, he actually sent to me in 2016. He signed them for me for my birthday when I turned 25 that year. Um, Johnny had a lot of laughs. I mean... If he were here now, he would want you to make a joke about his passing. And I think that the only way I can do that is to leave off this clip. Because this is pretty much what I think he would want. So, instead of saying, what do you want me to do next? Um, I'm just going to leave with this. Thank you, Johnny, for so many years of outstanding service and entertainment you are a great guy you were a fantastic person you were very full of life very funny and you were afraid to make jokes and i'm just going to leave off with this quote from the show about johnny's passing and that'll be it anyway thank you guys for watching and liking the video i really appreciate it and Anyhow, this is the clip I'm going to leave off. It should have been Bill.